Welcome YouTube community. I'm Jeremy from Wild Tech Designs and today we are going to go over three problems that a lot of you as motorhome class C owners may have with your RV and what we do here at Well Tech Designs to make your RV drive amazing, better than ever. So the first problem that we get a lot of times is that these things sit really low to the ground and the problem is, is pulling into your driveway or even gas station driveways, they have a tendency to want to rub. Now a lot of people do fix that by putting wheels on the back and we've seen that, but really ultimately a lot of times what that does is either bend or twist the frame in the back of these. So that is a huge issue and we're gonna show you how we fix that. The second thing that we don't like about these RVs is just overall how they turn and maybe even possibly handling on the freeway. We get a lot of sway out of them and that is never a good thing, especially when you're driving a giant box down the road and it gets even worse as if you're towing. So we're gonna talk about that and then number three is going to be if you like camping in remote areas you have to drive down a graded road or washboard road to get to your favorite camp spot and you feel like your whole rv is going to rattle apart that is definitely a big negative we don't like that so if that is a problem we're going to show you how we fix that as well all right problem one is driveways let's go for a ride so as you enter and exit our shop right here, you're gonna have a really nice transition. And this is always a good telltale if your RV is going to drag. This particular one does clear. However, if it did have the stabilizing jacks on it, these would most likely rub there and also as it comes all the way down in the back. So big no-no there. The second part is this gas station entrance. The entrance again, not really too bad. Right there, it gets really close in the front but I think the back would be overall okay. The exit is more what I'm worried about. And right here as we exit right there, we would definitely be dra dragging those stabilizing jacks on the rear, which we don't want to do. We found this other driveway that had a nice little speed bump on it. And this transition here also, you can tell as, as we get really close there, it would drag. And we actually touched the bottom in the back of it there, it's no good. All right guys, issue number two is gonna be stability and overall sway, whether it be making a turn in a driveway, a U-turn, and then on the freeway, let's go have some more fun in this RV. So I really love driving these RVs and getting an overall feel of how they handle and what they're doing. This left-hand turn is really nice because not only does it have a dip, but we're making a nice turn. And you can see that you do get a little bit of roll. Of course, I am taking this at a little bit higher speed than most of you probably do, but I really want to feel overall how this RV is handling. Now, as I pull into this parking lot, I'm going to make a giant U-turn. I know most of you probably aren't making U-turns like this, but again, I'm wanting to feel the overall stability of this coach as well as how much it really does lean. I think that's important in really controlling the ride. I'm going to jump on the freeway now and now it's testing overall acceleration. There is an on-ramp to a second freeway that I'm going to get on right here. And usually when you get on these on-ramps, you'll feel the little slight shift in how the RV kind of like jumps to the side. And it didn't really do that at all, which is a plus as I go over that freeway crossing. I'm able to take this turn at about 50 miles an hour, which is really pretty good for a 32 foot RV coming in at, you know, just under 14,000 pounds. Again, another freeway transition right there and it handled really well. As I come off this, I'm able to get my speed up to about 60 and start accelerating. I do start to notice as I'm going faster. I get a little bit more feedback through the steering wheel as this is a concrete and each little bump, I am kind of, you know, getting that little jilting feeling and I am getting a slight pull to the left. So right here, you can see that that steering wheel, I am getting a lot of vibration in it. And that's going to be the one really big benefit going to that steering stabilizer is it is a shock for your steering wheel absorbing all those little road bumps and things that you would normally feel in your everyday driving as you're traveling across country hitting the road. So I'm able to get up to about 70 miles an hour here 
really. I mean, overall, I'm going to say the coach feels pretty well. And you may be asking yourself, well, why would you be driving 70 in a, an RV? And I know that there's a lot of parts of the country that you are able to drive 70 miles an hour, even though California isn't one of them. So this next off-ramp is a little bit tighter, so I wanted to see how much I can maintain that same 50 miles an hour. I'm able to do that pretty well through this whole area. And overall, I'm gonna say this coach does pretty well. I was impressed. So we all have our favorite roads to get down. This is one of our favorite roads to drive, uh, whether it be with customers, but we want to show you guys just how that this road you can see has a ton of potholes in it and we're going to go take this RV for a ride down this road. So there it is guys we took this RV through a lot of fun little obstacles around town and these obstacles you may face in your everyday driving with your RV but now it's my turn to have some fun with this and we're gonna pull this in the shop here at Weld Tech Designs and put our suspension package on this thing and then have some fun again and show you guys the difference from before to after and how this rides and how it handles. So keep watching this and let's go have some more fun installing this lift kit. Well, you saw it completely stock and now we had a whole bunch of fun with it. And this is the end result. This thing looks amazing. Check this out, all kinds of fun stuff. But what is more important is we're gonna go over a lot of ground clearance issues that we were having before. We did a lot of like, we had fun sticking GoPros on the front of this thing. We're gonna head back out. We're gonna hit all those same driveways and all of those same turns so that that way you guys can get a real idea of the difference from what it did stock to what it's gonna do with this lift kit on there and the improved ride that I, I say that it has, but I guess ultimately that guy right there taking pictures is really gonna be the judge because when he came here he only wanted a four inch kit I took him for a ride so we got a lot of expectations here that we got to make sure that we meet so let's go have some fun let's go drive this thing and then we'll talk about more about what we did to the suspension on this let's go so as you see we come into this driveway and probably a little faster than most but really want to show you the benefit in that suspension but obviously nowhere near going to rub again here's our other driveway and geez i mean we have just a ton of room there no problem whatsoever going in and out you can even see that the differential just everything there's just a ton of space and the last time we did this we did rub right here i think we have a ton of room there So as we jump back into this, we are taking some of these corners and I'm going to tell you probably the first thing is that my overall confidence level is going to be a lot higher when driving this. I know this product, so I probably am driving it a little bit harder than most and you know, always have fun taking the customers for a ride. And you can see that in there, you still do have the body roll. We're not completely eliminating it, but I mean, most people would say, well, there you have a lift on there. There's no possible way that you could drive it as fast or that you would be able to stock. And this is kind of just to debunk that myth. As you can see, we're taking this corner even faster with the lift on it. Now, this part's really fun as, yeah, I mean, 
don't even have to say much there. I mean, you can see how much faster. And I love this angle, really, getting to see the suspension actually working on there, which is going to be great. Who doesn't love a little slow motion here? Look at that front wheel just dancing, that goofy guy driving it with like one hand. That was like butter. So some fun footage for you guys to see kind of a before and after. Obviously we weren't able to go as fast through it before. So as we jump onto the freeway here, again, we are doing that same freeway transition from one freeway to another. We did increase our speed by about five miles an hour going through this, which was really nice. Uh, and you know, to me also impressive, just being able to go a little bit faster through there. Actually, we about 65 miles an hour, so that's pretty good. Now the big thing that right here, what I noticed is I'm not getting all that feedback because I do have that steering stabilizer in there. Now right here, we did go to a larger tire, so you're going to notice that the big thing with this is that overdrive somewhat when I'm trying to accelerate here, my, I do shift down into drive. So something to think about if you're going to be going to a larger tire and you are going to be towing you may want to consider going to a lower gear ratio and that is something that we do do here at Weld Tech Designs and we'll eventually do in this RV in the future. So again, as we've just passed that large semi on the right, we didn't even really notice it. You notice that it didn't really want to push and it does that a lot of times as you pass large vehicles and you are going a lot faster than them, you will feel that. Now, of course, you know, there wasn't a semi to pass us to see if it would help push us. But really overall, this is really staying in the lane. And that's the whole key to this is keeping it in the lane. And majority of this, I do drive it with just one hand on the wheel. So you're not white knuckling it the whole time. So I'm going to jump off the freeway here. We're going to turn around. We're going to head back to the shop and see overall how it does and see what the customer thinks. All right, guys, well, you know, after filming this fun video, I'm almost embarrassed to show you guys this video because this thing's just filthy. So when you bring us your RV, make sure it's like clean and beautiful because it's going to be the star of the show here. But really, I'm just giving this guy a hard time because... <laughs> giving me a hard time, yeah. <laughs> we had so much fun with him, and I'm going to tell you guys first about what we did to this. So that way you'll know, and then I'm going to drag him into this video and have Danny tell us all about what he thought and what his intentions were before he even got to Weld Tech Designs, guys. So I guess first, let's start off. You're going to see that this is going to have the black mirrors already on it. So we continued that black and did the blackout package on this. We blacked out the front bumper. We blacked out the grill. Um, don't you know watch the license plate. We want to keep people from stalking all of our customers because they drive such killer vehicles. Um, and then the last thing with that blackout package is gonna consist of is going to be this wheel. And you know what, if you get like the blackout package, you're gonna need to get like a cool Weltec shirt. So we're gonna have to make sure we get him a shirt at yeah. least in that. So we're gonna continue that black concept with all the cool stuff that we have underneath this thing, including these killer black coils, these black Fox shocks, we have black I-beams, and black radius arms, guys. I mean, all kinds of just killer stuff to customize an RV. And you guys say, why would you ever do that? But there's so many reasons and we're gonna keep getting into that. So to finish off this lift kit in the front, we have dropped down the sway bar and you're gonna notice that we are also now running our Fox steering stabilizer bracket underneath the bottom of this, along with our, well, our steering stabilizer bracket and our Fox shock because you do now have the option to run Kings in there if you would like, just throwing that out there. So I'm making sure I'm giving you guys all the correct information, but a ton of really cool things in there, but not to mention you, I we're missing like the most obvious thing is this awesome set of BFG tires, which would have never, ever, ever fit underneath your stock RV. 
So the size tire that this is, this is a 235 85 16. This is still running on your stock wheels. So we're saving you a bunch of money not having to buy wheels and just wrapping those stock wheels in this tire again with that chrome hubcap. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up. But I guess let's make sure we show this right here is how much room you have in the back of this still. And the whole reason we still have all that room is because with the new radius arm and bracket, we pushed all the suspension forward in this. So you're going to get a ton of room. We've had a lot of fun with this thing, driving it, hitting the bumps and the dips and no problems with anything rubbing in the front, which is always a plus, especially if you're going to be taking your RV out camping in those best, you know, secluded spots. So let's go jump to the back and show you what we did back there. So when this thing came in, you're going to notice that it sat really low and also, you know, this particular customer does a lot of towing with it. So that was definitely a downfall because this thing did drag a lot in the rear, as you're going to see from this video. But what is nice again with the back of this, so we're running our full custom spring in the rear. We're also running our Fox shocks in the rear. Now these are not reservoir shocks. These are just the standard Fox shocks. It's a 2.0 shock. Now keeping with this same tire size, we're able to run the dually wheels back here without having to run a wheel spacer, which is going to be key to running this size tire on your RV, whether it be a four or six inch kit. You can see that you just have a ton of room in there. I mean, like I could fit my giant melon in there, you know, it's just all kinds of space for activities. So that's it for this lift, guys. So when you are thinking about like, why would I want to do it? You're going to look at this video as far as from the before to the after and go, wow, there is a lot of benefits and differences from this. But, you know, really, other than me telling you guys about this, I'm just going to drag this guy in over here <laughs> because how did you find? So, first of all, this is Danny and we're Pastor Danny, right? Yep. So yeah. I'm like. I know you're OK with talking with people, so <laughs> you and I are going to have some fun. So. First of all, how long have you owned the motorhome? Uh, almost 11 years. And what made you decide that it was time for a change? I got stuck. I go to Glamis a lot and I got stuck because I was so low and I buried, I got stuck in the sand and the trailer that I tow buried in the sand. And at that point, after spending two hours getting myself out, and then I go out in the dirt and I'm constantly in rough areas and I'm always you know you're driving real slow and you're just fragile it's fragile you feel fragile yes and i just i'd seen the videos and i just was done. craziness yeah i was done i called immediately so but you when you first got here you were like i'm doing a four inch kit yeah, yeah. let's just do blocks in the rear i just need a little bit higher because Correct. the whole thing was you were just dragging yes. the back did sit low yes. so what made you change your mind from well, a four to a six inch kit? Or every, what made you want a four inch kit only? Well, where I keep my motorhome stored, I always drag going in and out of the driveway too. And I would drag everywhere. It just was something I became used to. But when I never got here- settled. Never, never settled, yeah, never settled. Yeah. When, I, when I got here, I was gonna do the four inch and just kind of do as, as financially kind of keep it cheap because I really didn't care about the ride because I don't do a lot of touring. I just drive straight to the desert or to Johnson Valley or Glamis or wherever. But he took me for a ride. First mistake, guys, yes, let's just yes. be clear. Don't go on the ride. If I ask you, do you want to <laughs> go for a ride? You just, because if you go on a ride, you got to go like this. Here you go. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> because you. Because then you're going to get the leaf spring in the back. And he took me in a parking lot. And I have to say, I've never been in, a, I've never been in a motor home doing 25 miles an hour in a parking lot and then going down a road that I would never go over five miles an hour in, in a motor home. Which and, is, which is great yeah, because yeah. he said, go do this. So we took this, yeah, we I went wanted, five yeah. miles an hour down the road. And then when we were done, we went 30 miles an hour down yeah. the same road. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you want to be totally impressed with your motor home and you want to be able to drive it like, like a car or van, <laughs> and you want to have it smooth and not rattle and squeak and just, just be able to feel like not fragile, but feel like you're in control of the vehicle, you need to call Jeremy. 
Jeremy is awesome. WeldTech is awesome. They will help you. They will make you feel safer when you're driving. I think the safety level just goes up when you have more control of the vehicle. And the motorhome is, is 100 times plus different than it was when I brought it here. And if I would have found him sooner, I would have done it. I, I, don't, I, I think it's such an improvement on, on the vehicle. That See, now I'm going to have to pay him back now. I got to start handing no, him no. the money. For, but no. even like when we were on the freeway and we're doing 70, 75 miles an hour. And 75, like, 75. Okay, and he's like, I've never driven this this fast. And Correct. then we pass a semi. And, and it doesn't move. It we, doesn't we move. We didn't even stop our conversation no, to no. be like, whoa. No. You know, it Before was like, it's like, oh, I'm coming up to a truck. Whoa. <laughs> and we're just like talking and yeah. Uh, you need to do this to your motorhome. You you will love your motorhome. You will enjoy driving your motorhome. You won't feel like, oh, I feel like intense. You, you feel kind of stressed. You're literally driving down the road with one hand on the steering wheel, having a conversation, feeling in control of the vehicle. I think that to me is even... Far outweighs yeah, the 25 yeah, miles an yeah, hour over those yeah. big bumps. I mean, the suspension part is amazing. <laughs> I would say now it's like a Cadillac. <laughs> and I tell people like, what is it? I'm like, it's the difference between like a truck and yeah. a Cadillac. I yeah. mean, it's it is. So, well, compared to how it used to drive. Right. It's so much better. You need to do this. Don't hesitate. Pick up the phone. Call WellTech. You, you won't be sorry. Right now, pick up that phone. <laughs> Dial 619-596-9831. Did you hear me? 619-596-98. No, I'm just yeah. kidding, guys. But no, I mean, this is important to me because really my goal is, yes, I want to build you a quality product that it's not like, oh, I can tell the difference a little bit because you are spending a good chunk of change. It's not inexpensive to do this. I will be the first one to say that, but there's so many expensive parts that go into this, I will tell you that. And when you get it, I really want you to have that confidence and going, wow, like, this is yes. this is not like just a little bit better like this is huge the confidence level is huge and jeremy couldn't be a nicer guy i mean i mean it's really, we have to give yeah. props to Alyssa because yeah. if we don't say hey hi Alyssa five, was Alyssa, great. Yeah, you know Alyssa was then great. She was she'll great cry too. and be like yeah. oh sure i didn't do anything guys it's all jeremy <laughs> jeremy jeremy you know but anyways yeah. i think this is a fun video guys this is the first time we've made a video like this so please, 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 I'm gonna do you like, let's do a couple things here. We're gonna give away a t-shirt. So let's give away like a shirt. I want some comments on this video. I want you guys telling me, yes, this helped seeing the before and after and actually on the road, on the bumps, because I will tell you guys, this video took a ton of time to make to go out and film. And I will continue making these videos if you guys let me know like this helps this this i was kind of on the fence this definitely makes me understand it better it's great seeing danny talk about it and going hey yeah okay that's not just me jibber jabbering about it guys <laughs> so really thank you guys so much thank you danny for thank being you, a Jeremy. part of this and i will see you guys in the next video